Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Ice Cream Social. You already know what it is. We have to get the housewarming out of the way, so let's just go ahead and get that going. I want to thank everybody that has been purchasing the merchandise. If you have not done so yet, it is still 50% off. You might be wondering, hey, Mondo, why is it 50% off? Because it's Black History Month. I want to give back. I want to make sure that all my people are wearing the merchandise. They're wearing the merch. So head over to IceCreamSocialPodcast.com. Use promo code 50% Mondo and get 50% off your entire order. Also, Make sure you follow us on social media, on Twitter at ICS underscore podcast. We actually just changed it on Instagram. We made it a lot easier for people. It's just Ice Cream Social Podcast. You type that in, we'll be the first ones to pop up. Uh, Follow us and like us on Facebook, Ice Cream Social Podcast, of course. And then obviously, follow us, subscribe, watch, like, comment, all that good stuff on YouTube, Ice Cream Social Podcast. We do have new videos coming out. Actually, now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, we do have a new music video coming out. Now, you might be thinking, Mondo, y'all make music now? Oh, no, I mean, we musically talented, but we don't necessarily make music. We made a parody song. It's actually already up on all the podcast platforms under, of course, Ice Cream Social. So if you haven't heard it, go on there, listen to it, check it out. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Music video is coming soon, and I'm very excited about it. It's all about getting that merch, man, you know? But anyways, not to give too much away on that. So make sure that you definitely stay tuned and you are on the look out. Um, On this episode, we're talking about being uncomfortably comfortable. Now, you might be wondering what exactly I'm talking about, but I will get into that right after everybody's favorite introduction. So let's go. Cream on the inside, clean on the outside. Cream. Whoa. A cream. Cream. Yeah. Ice cream. Uh, ice cream social yeah we back at it cream here we go Crick cream whoa whoa ice cream ice cream social now how rude of me i want to wish a very happy valentine's day to all the beautiful couples out there whether you're married you're dating or you just genuinely appreciate your significant other happy valentine's day to all of you i'm currently spending my valentine's day with my valentine and that's this here microphone because i'm recording the ice cream social is something i genuinely love to do so let me go ahead and say happy valentine's day to you too microphone and for those people that are single out there you might be possibly looking you might be on tinder soul swipe whatever you use i know for a fact this is going to be your mentality this upcoming weekend after you go see the black panther let me talk to you let me buy you a drink Okay, now on a serious note, what are we talking about today on this episode? And that is being uncomfortably comfortable. Now, you might be asking, Mondo, what do you mean by that? And I just simply mean putting yourself in an uncomfortable position to get ahead in life, whether that's going to a job fair, because ultimately when you go to college, you want the outcome to be you have a secure job so you can go out, work, pay off those student loans, and basically start making some real money. So a lot of people... You know, they, when they're in college, they don't want to go to those job fairs. They think it's pointless. But at the end of the day, it's necessary. I know when I graduated, everybody was like, you know, how'd you get that job? How'd you hear about it? How'd you find out about it? And I told them, I said, yeah, I went to the job fair. I said, why didn't you go? And they would always say the same thing. Oh, I didn't feel like it. Well, then that's why you don't have this job. You could have been the person to take the job from me. But because you were comfortable with being comfortable, you don't have the job. So you have to put yourself in these uncomfortable situations in order to get ahead in life. I mean, ultimately, that's what it's all about. And I actually got this next this next piece from my dad. He was talking to me and it actually made perfect sense. He was like, if you're an African-American, if you're a black person, you naturally have to conform around white people, whether you like it or not, whether you're in denial, it it truly does happen. I mean, when, when you're around your buddies, you might drop the n-word you might use certain jargon you might talk with certain slang ebonics where you're not going to talk like that in an office environment especially when there's not a lot of black people in that office you're going to talk exactly how they talk to blend and to mold so that you ultimately can get ahead in life so you might not be comfortable with necessarily masking who you really are but at the end of the day who's going to hire somebody at a corporation whether that's a fortune 500 or any type of corporation who's going to 
hire somebody that uses slang, that uses jargon, that doesn't know how to pronunciate their words properly. Nobody's going to hire somebody like that. So black people just naturally have to conform around white people in order to be accepted by society. A lot of people might be listening and saying that's very incorrect, but I worked in corporate America. It is very accurate. These, some of the African-Americans who I worked with were the most hood people outside of work. But once they stepped into that office, they were the most clean cut, well-spoken individuals. It's facts. I've been there. It's facts. But what he also said was, you know, the reason why some white people are still, and this is not a racial conversation by any means, it just all ties into uncomfortably comfortable. The reason why some white people are still racist is simply because white people don't necessarily have to be around black people in order to get ahead, unless they're in the entertainment industry, because everybody knows the entertainment industry, whether that's sports. Uh, music unless it's like country music but sports music is basically dominated by black people so if you want to get ahead in the entertainment industry why a white person has to conform around black people they have to know the culture they have to know what to say and what not to say but in a business environment a white person doesn't necessarily have to conform around being around black people i mean it's just the fact of the matter so if you're an African-American, if you're a black person, you have to naturally have that mindset as to, okay, they don't have to conform around me, but I have to conform around them. So it's just putting yourself in that uncomfortable situation for a short period of time to be comfortable. Now, if you don't like that, that idea, that rationale, by all means, you don't have to work in corporate America. But at the end of the day, the higher up you go in a Fortune 500 company, the higher up the ladder you go, the less, the fewer and fewer black people you're going to see. So you're going to have to start talking more and more like them. You're going to start going to those office parties. You're going to start going to those baby showers where it's a majority white people. And you can't say the things that you would normally say around your everyday friends because it might be viewed the wrong way. I mean, it's sad to say, and I hate to say this on the podcast, but a lot of white people will view certain stuff that we say on a daily basis as ghetto. And I know that because my roommate is white and some things I say, he's like, dude, like, I'm not allowed to say that. I'm like, you're absolutely right. You're not allowed to say that because me and my friends, we talk differently. Now I'm not encouraging, you know, vulgar language, racial slurs or anything. I'm just telling you the fact of the matter is when you are working in corporate America as an African-American, you naturally just have to conform to, to play your role, to fit the part and to work your way up the corporate ladder. Actually, I'm going to tell you guys a story and then we'll go to a quick break. And that is simply that I remember my friend, she was applying for a radio station. I'm not going to say any names because that's not important. She was applying for a radio station and she was telling me how they wanted to hire her, but they told her that she needed to change her hair. She needed to flat iron her hair, curl it or something because she had the natural look, which I'm a fan of. She had the natural look going and the company was just like, you know, you need to flat iron it. You need to curl it. You need to do something with it because you can't be on radio. You can't be on air with your natural hair. And that made her upset. She didn't understand why. I was like, well, look at, I said, go home, look at the news and look at your everyday news anchors, your talk show hosts, look at their hair. It's always, I'm not saying that the natural look isn't presentable by all means it's presentable, but you never see any females with the natural look on camera. They always have either have a weave on or they have it flat ironed or curled or something done to it. And you know, it's sad, but it's just the reality of today's society. Now, will that change down the road? I surely do hope so. But at the moment, that's just where it is. So I told her, I said, you know, I wouldn't necessarily be upset. I mean, you have the right to be upset, but you just have to look at the media outlets nowadays and what they're looking for. I mean, if you want to now, if you want to get the job, you might want to flat iron it and then change it once you get hired. I mean, that's always a route you could take. I mean, whenever I go to, for a job interview, I always cut my hair down low. And then I grow it back out because I just like my hair a little long on top. Nothing wrong with that. You just got to play the part when you go in there, talk your stuff and get the job. Once you get the job, they're not going to fire you because of your hair because then you can sue. But I'm just saying, long story short, you just have to put yourself in an uncomfortable situation ultimately to come out on top and to make yourself comfortable. Now we will go to a quick break and then I will be right back to drop some more knowledge on y'all. How you doing? My name is PJ. I'm from the BickerBots podcast. BickerBots podcast is basically what happens when you take a Republican, a Libertarian, and a Liberal and sit them all in front of the mics and discuss current events and uh, most pop culture. Would it be cheating to bang a smoking hot sex robot? robot. Pack, Would please answer because I need to know. Oh, I don't you think need so. to know? <laughs> so we here at the BickerBots podcast feel everyone's special. 
even the gingers. I'm going to apologize to all the ginger listeners at this time. Ray Ray's a stout racist. You just said they should be 50% off at the adoption homes. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. I care about worldly issues like our brothers down under and their sex crazed koala bears. Koala chlamydia an all time high and is spreading. <laughs> Bro, get them koalas some fucking rubbers. <laughs> Doesn't Here's the Bicker Bots podcast. We don't judge people based on their sexuality. Oh, not all of them, but but it's their version. It's not like so our they have. Version. Okay, huh? Interesting. Oh, you starting to think about all them catch and fucking, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I listened to the bestiality episode. That was <laughs> quite interesting conversation. Let me tell you. Uh, there's nothing interesting about it. It's just man, beast, and love. love. <laughs> exactly. Well, if you like what you heard, we're on Stitcher, iTunes, SoundCloud, basically any platform you can download a podcast on. All right, welcome back. So I actually told you guys I wanted to get the crowd more involved, get more uh, listener interaction. So I did take a poll of when individuals had to put themselves in an uncomfortable situation in order to get out on top. Now, I'm going to share those stories with you. Of course, I'm not going to drop any names because I'd like to keep that stuff confidential. And I know people just don't like to be put out there like that. So the first person here says, moving to a new city, starting a new school, and on top of that, starting a new job all in a matter of three days. Now, can you imagine that? Could you imagine how uncomfortable that situation was? But can you just listen to how much will come out of that in the future? Moving to a new city. So this woman is being placed in a new city where there's new opportunities. Starting a new school, furthering her education, getting to meet new people, growing her network, and then starting a new job, having new co-workers, having new possibilities, possible moving up the rank at this new company all in a matter of three days that might sound uncomfortable but honestly that uncomfortable situation situation sounds like a blessing to me now the next person says uh taking our previous employer obviously i'm not going to say the name but taking our previous employer lol but for real i completely agree because now i'm gonna share the story i know he didn't really elaborate but seeing how i can relate to what he's saying Basically, when I took the position with the previous employer, I was at my school, the University of Kentucky, go blue, big blue nation. But when I got placed, I got placed in a city I had never been to, a city I had never even driven through, a city where I didn't know a single soul. So that was already uncomfortable for me. Secondly, the position was not exactly what they told me it would be. They made it sound like I'd be doing X, Y, and Z when I was really doing A, B, and C. And that was completely uncomfortable. And I know for a fact that is what my man is talking about. Just going into a job, expecting one thing, and ultimately you're doing something completely different. And that completely throws you off. However, the comfortable part and the part where you come out on top is ultimately being put in a position where you learn new skills, you learn new stuff. And on top of that, with it being a Fortune 100 company, that looks good on a resume. So you can ultimately use that to get an even better job, a job that you actually want. So now the next person says, studying abroad and learning a language. That's real. Studying abroad is a different experience. I can honestly say I've traveled abroad, but I've never studied abroad. Studying abroad, uh, if you have the opportunity to do so, I believe it is a fantastic opportunity. It will uh, definitely looks good to employers, but also learning a language. Um, I have a little sister. She knows Mandarin. She speaks pretty fluent Mandarin and it's difficult. You know, it's uncomfortable, but at the end of the day, when you're applying for those jobs, you're looking for those different opportunities. Heck, if you just come across somebody that speaks that language, it is a very useful skill. Heck, sometimes I think about buying Rosetta Stone so I can speak a little Mandarin myself. But anyways, thank you for your submission. Uh, let's see if we got one more that I can give you guys. Um, yeah, okay, I got one more for you guys I'll share. And this person, he went deep, so obviously I won't say his name, but he said, losing my job turning down a potential job, deciding to serve and work for a nonprofit and embrace the process and being content with my journey to success. Boom, that was real. I always gotta save the deepest comment for last because I truly do believe that there is a lot of struggle and heartache in that message. But there's also a lot of growth and prosperity in that message as well. So I'll read it again and then I'll tell you what I think about it. So he said, losing my job, turning down a potential job, deciding to serve and work for a nonprofit and embrace the process, being content with my journey to success. Now the heartache and the struggle will come with losing a job, of course, 
and then turning down a potential job because i mean at the end of the day all jobs are not good jobs and when you turn down a job ultimately you're turning down a paycheck now where the where the growth and the prosperity come in is where he said deciding to serve a nonprofit and embracing the process everything is a process i'm so tired of people saying you know they want to be rich and then i say well how do you want to get there they say make money moves i can honestly tell you i have no idea what that means what does make money moves mean everybody in the world the one percent the rich people in the world they're doing something they're not making money moves they actually are doing something i i mean i know 2017 was the year of cardi b and everything shout out to her she was on the podcast several times but don't say make money moves tell me how do you, what are these money moves you're referring to so when he said embrace the process that is strength growth and prosperity because now he's realizing that life is all about ups and downs but it's all about the outcome in which you take those opportunities so shout out to him for sharing that story with me i definitely appreciate it i had to share it with you guys because i thought it was essential so before we go into the last little bit let's go into another quick break and then we will be right back greetings i am the reverend godfather the main host and frontman for the Long Coat Mafia podcast. And I welcome you to check out our show on iTunes slash Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, and our website, thelongcoatmafia.podbean.com. Topics include geek related items, convention panels, interviews, creepy pastas, social commentary, and a heck of a lot more. So give us a listen, and by the end, you might be asking others. What's your gig? All right, I just want to thank everybody that shared their stories about being put in uncomfortable situations. I know sometimes it is hard to open up, but at the end of the day, sometimes we need to get some stuff off of our chest so that we can truly appreciate where we've come from. I know just last night, um, I try not to share too many personal stories, but just last night I was out with a friend and we were out getting drinks and just catching up and we just sat down and realized like, man, we have come a long way in a short amount of time i mean i know we say that college was the best four years of our life but it was also the four most reckless years of our life and ultimately if we didn't do some of the things that we did in college we might not be in a position where we are today and i mean it's all about just learning and just progressing and just like the last individual said it's all about just trusting the process i mean i know i hate to sound cliche but that's what it's really all about so let's get back to being uncomfortably comfortable so also just being uncomfortably comfortable is just something you know it, something in your life might happen that is unexpected and you know I was just given the advice and this happened to me as well but it's just don't dwell on what has already happened don't dwell and put all your energy and all your time and all your focus into what has already happened Take it for a grain of salt and then take all that same energy and, fo and focus and transfer all that over to creating the best possible outcome from that situation. I mean, I was told that, you know, life always is going to give you twists and turns and always going to throw loops at you. But at the end of the day, what separates, you know, the regular individual from a great individual is how they respond to that, because those people that dwell on it. And those people that are always just constantly focused on what has already happened never progress and they never move forward. It's always about taking what has happened and ultimately making the best possible outcome. I mean, life is very little of what happens to you. It's all about how you react to that situation. And that's what it's all about. I mean, at the end of the day, people might look at Ice Cream Social and think, man, this all there is is positive stuff. All there is. I mean, honestly, let's not even just talk about Ice Cream Social. Let's talk about Social media in general, social media, all people post is just the positive things and the good outlooks on life, but people never post their struggles. People never post their day-to-day -day lives. People never post if they got laid off or fired from their jobs. People never post if they couldn't pay their rent. People only post the good stuff. People always post the brand new clothes, the brand new cars, them traveling. People only post the good stuff, but at the end of the day, that's all about what you're seeing on social media is just an outcome. Because whatever those people did, whatever they struggled through, they progress and they transferred all that energy over and they post their outcomes. I mean, some people might view that as a bad thing, but I don't. 
when people post nothing but traveling pictures, people post nothing but a new car, they post a new house. I love to see stuff like that because that means, because I know for a fact people go through trials and tribulations. Every single person, whether you're rich, famous, broke, or poor, everybody goes through something. So the fact that, you know, whatever you went through, you are able to still come out on top, buy that new car, buy that new house, you know, if it's not tax return season. I know how some of y'all people get, y'all go a little crazy with the tax return money. But anyways, if they come out on top with all those things, they're able to travel the world and do all that stuff. I know that they persevered and they transferred all the energy over to make it something positive and their outcome was greater than what actually happened to them. I love seeing stuff like that. So keep that energy going. Keep it going into 2018, 2019, 2020, 2055. I don't care. Keep that energy going because that's the positive energy that the world needs. We don't need people that just dwell and focus on the past and focus on things that already happened. Take off your rear view mirrors and just drive straight. Drive through all the nonsense that is thrown your way on a daily basis. So with that being said, I do have a, little, a few quotes here. You guys know I like to give some quotes of some very uh, influential individuals so that you know that I'm not the only person going through it and you're not the only person going through it that every single person is going through it now this first one actually comes from a song but it's one of my favorite songs Kanye West said giving up is way harder than trying don't give up when things get rough as they sometimes will you need to persevere and get through that now I'm not going to give my two cents on every single quote because that'll just take way too long but for my more uh quotes that mean a lot to me and I think they'll mean a lot to you guys I am going to give you my two cents because I think it's important to share what a blow Joe and average Joe like myself thinks about some of these uh quotes so Winston Churchill said never give up on something that you can't go a day without thinking about now this one right here means a lot to me because there's some days where you know, I would have gotten done working on the ice cream social, working on the podcast, the merch, all the other stuff that goes along with it. And I'll just sit in bed and I'll just have a ton of ideas just going on in my head, shooting off like fireworks on how I can make the brand better. Heck, I remember one time I was asleep and it was an intense dream and I was came up with this crazy idea. I woke up, popped up out of my sleep. Put it into my phone, wrote down the note. I still have the note here. I'm not going to share it with you all because it's very personal to me, but I wrote the note down in my phone on how to make the brand better. If you can't stop thinking about something, don't give up on it. I mean, sometimes this podcast stuff is very difficult work. I mean, I'm going on my second season, about to enter the third season. And I mean, sometimes the thought of giving up still crosses my mind. But at the end of the day, I know that my podcast is touching thousands of people, touching people in 26 countries, touching people who I've never seen, and it motivates them to keep going. And that is why I keep going, because I can't stop thinking about it. And I know some of you individuals can't stop thinking about it. So with that being said, we're not done here. We're not giving up. Let's move on. Bear Grylls said that survival can be summed up in three words. Never give up. That's the heart of it, really. Just keep trying. Mandy Hale said never stop trying. Never stop believing. Never give up. Your day will come. All these people that you see on social media or you see on the television or you see uh, they're founders of certain apps. That stuff didn't come overnight. People see Uber. They think, oh, man, Uber just popped up overnight. No, Uber's been a work in progress for over 10 years. That did not pop up overnight. Nothing pops up overnight. And if it does pop up overnight, it's not going to stay around for very long. The greatest ideas take years and years of molding, planning, and preparation in order to get to that point. Uh, Shailene Johnson said, get uncomfortable being on no she i'm sorry i messed that quote entirely up let me let me restart shailene johnson said get comfortable being uncomfortable that's how you break the plateau and reach that next level i don't even think i need to say anything about that because she hit the nail right on the head with that one uh lastly ed foreman said winners are those people who make a habit of doing things losers are uncomfortable doing i saved that one for last because it is plainly spoken and it means a lot winners are uncomfortable with doing things losers no i'm sorry i keep messing this stuff up i'm sorry guys give me a break today winners are comfortable with doing things that losers are uncomfortable with doing very important because the winners in life always put themselves 
in that position where they are uncomfortable, where they're outside of their comfort zone and they have to do something that they just don't feel at ease with. And they know for a fact that the outcome will be so much greater than the income. I mean, that's why they say, you know, scared money doesn't make money because at the end of the day, you know, people might be uncomfortable with giving away X amount of dollars, but in return, they know they will reap the benefits of that investment. I mean, that's what investing is. Putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation. You think people just wake up one day and say, hey, I'm going a, I'm to a spend $10,000 on this stock and not think that they're going to make their money back. Well, hopefully think they're going to make their money back. No, come on, man. It's putting yourself in that uncomfortable situation to come out on top to have a better outcome. And I mean, that's just really, I'm not going to beat the nail on the head because I feel like I've talked the whole episode about it, which I have because that's what it's all about. But at the end of the day, for those people out there, you're thinking, man, I don't want to go out and open those company doors and talk to the HR person face to face. I don't want to um, move to a new city where I don't know anybody. I don't want to start up this new app because I'm afraid people won't like it. I don't want to start this new vlog because I feel like people won't watch it. At the end of the day, if you're passionate about it, you're positive about it, people can see and feel that energy. I guarantee you people will tune in, people will watch it because they know it's something that you care about. Do you think that Logan Paul and Jake Paul just woke up one day with millions and millions of viewers, tens of millions of viewers? No, they started off on Vine with thousands of viewers and then they just escalated from there because at the end of the day, if you are passionate, other people will feel that same energy. I guarantee you, my podcast, the first season averaged about 20 listens per episode. Now we're at thousands of listens per episode. It's all about just being consistent and to keep going with. So with that being said, I'm gonna leave you guys on this note. If you are put in an uncomfortable situation, don't dwell and focus on the here and the now think about the outcome and think about how you become a better person because of it and to truly trust the process because at the end of the day you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable thank you for tuning in to this episode of the ice cream social i definitely appreciate it like i said follow us on all social media platforms ice cream social podcast follow us on twitter at ics underscore podcast like subscribe watch all on YouTube, Ice Cream Social Podcast. Continue to buy the merch. It is going global. Uh, we have that video shoot coming soon. We actually should be getting the Black History Month merch coming in the mail any day now. I'm definitely excited to share with you guys everything that has been in the works over the past few months. None of this stuff has happened overnight. It does take months of preparation to execute. So that's all I got for you guys. Big things are over the horizon, over the Himalaya for Ice Cream Social. Just, so just continue to stay tuned. And don't forget to tell a friend to tell a friend. That's all I got for you guys. Peace.